Hey everybody, I'm Moe. Today I'm bringing you guys the five best decks for the new Legends of Runeterra expansion. So, yeah, I'm going to start off with two decks that aren't very new, but then the last three decks are all brand new decks, um, and decks with all the new champions in it, and new cards in it. I'm really excited because most of the times with expansions we don't get brand new cards, or we don't, we don't get brand new cards that are good, or at least multiple that are good. We might have like one card or two card or a couple that are pretty solid and then the rest are kind of out to dry but in this set i feel like all of the champions are actually pretty good i feel like a lot of the support cards that go with them are pretty solid so it feels a lot more than just like oh i'm throwing one card into the deck it's just like oh i'm actually playing good cards it feels really so before we get into the video, I wanted to um, let you guys know that I am making Legend of Terror content again. I already have three videos planned for this week. And so the schedule is going to be I'm going to stream three days over on Twitch.tv and I'm going to post three videos here. So basically, you can kind of figure out if there's not a video posted by 10 a.m. or noon, then I'm going to go live later that day. So go follow me on Twitter or go follow me on Twitch so you know whenever I'm going to go live for that. And then if I post a video between, you know, they're usually going to come out around 10 a.m. or noon around Central Standard Time that I'm not scheduled to stream that night, but I still might stream that night. Who knows? Because I love stream. Yeah, so I'm back to LOR, making LOR content. So you can expect Meta Mondays, expect deck guides to come back, gameplay videos, all that good stuff that I was doing beforehand. So, um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully it's an, an, a nice welcome back from you guys. And I'm excited to make LOR content and compete in LOR opens again. So yeah, so let's just get into the video after that intro. The first two decks we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna get those out of the way really quickly, are not new decks, they're just decks that I think are very strong and gonna be very strong, especially with people playing these really new decks. So both of these are gonna be aggressive style decks, um, and it's really supposed to punish all of the new players, or all, not sorry, all of the new decks. So people are gonna be playing really greedy, like Freljord Elder Dragon Ramp, and these like greedy Mordekaiser lists. All these really greedy lists, so these first two decks are really the first three decks, but the first two decks are not new, really refined aggro decks. It's going to be the Zed Gwyn deck, and it's going to be the Jinx um, Vandal City. But both of these, I'm not going to go too much into these because they aren't new decks. But the idea is you are just going to go super fast. This plays with the elusive keyword, so it's hard for your opponents to do them if they're on the Kaiser style deck, a Freljord Elder Dragon style deck, and all they're trying to do is ramp into big things. Um, you can kind of just with a lot of pressure and they can't really deal with that so with zed gwen the idea is you play a like, shadow apprentice or a green glade duo and then you have zed come out you have the shark chariot start going off and then dragon ambush is the best card you have in your deck you can put more tech spells in here if you wanted to you nopify um you could put anything really that you wanted to in your spell slot but the rest of this is pretty core cool. you can go down like two redeemed prodigies will probably be the first thing that i would take out but being able to get shark chariots multiple or chariots and then have your dragon ambush attack your shadow apprentice your gwins your really big stuff attacking really really there aren't too many new cards that could even fit into this package the only one i can be the three mana hate spike that deals five to something but with this style of deck i don't think you necessarily need that um because yeah and especially because you want to keep your mana open now to play around shackles and play around curses which by the way i have a youtube short coming out on that also of how to play around uh, curses then you don't really want to be spending a lot of your mana you kind of went in a pass for a little bit and then wait until you can go okay is that on three get rid of a curse that you play on me attack with that type deal next one is jinx discard so again not too much to go over this is just a nice discard aggro deck and discard your little cheap units you burn this deck has uh, i mean six um 12 13 or 15 and then another nine, so that's 24 per burn in them. So you can do a lot. You can basically just burn them out from zero, literally, and not including Jinx and then get excited or a Jinx rocket. So the goal is kind of just to put out a bunch of little cheap units, apply a little bit of pressure, and then towards the mid game to end game, once you're done attacking and your opponent has their blocker set up, you kind of just try to block them, and then you're going to be able to burn them out with pullback, drop harpoon, stuff like that, which so that's enough of the boring, not cool decks. Let's get into the cool decks, which is the first one that's kind of going to go along with the other two. And also it's not as new. It's just a deck that hasn't really seen the light in a very long time. So I wanted to show it first, but um, it has the same concept of these two as it's an aggro deck, except it plays the elusive keyword. So it's really hard for your opponents to deal with. So if your opponent's just playing like good old fashioned, you know, Noxus, Shadow Isle, Midrange, or Greedy Control, 
uh, this deck should be very, very good into those greedy control decks, especially with the um, addition of Omen Dog. I'm not going to pretend to I know how to pronounce this card's name, so I'm just going to call it Omen Dog, which says attack around the top, allies of your deck, plus one, plus one. Fun fact, uh, the elusive keyword is very broken. We've known that for almost four years now in Legends of Rune. All of these elusives were very broken with three power or at a 3-2 um, or a 3-2. So they nerfed them all, right? So how do we play the broken cards again as we just buff them? So the difference between something like this and then the Teemo elusive deck um, is that this deck has a lot higher high roll. Meaning if you start the game with like a turn one Omen Hawk, turn two Snow Dog, or turn one Omen Hawk, turn two, hope your Omen Hawk with Dark and Spear attack, then you have the chance to just pull like a 4-4 four, four elusive, which is really broken. Um, and it's going to be hard for your opponent to deal with that. You have the chance to just go turn one Omen Hawk, turn two, three, three elusive, and your opponent can't really deal with that. Um, basically, if you can get your buffs on turns like one, two, one, two, and three, to the point to where you can start just playing these like plus two, plus two, plus three, plus three elusive, uh, your opponent, your control opponent's not going to be able to deal with that. That's going to be how you beat a lot of the control decks is by going, oh, you're going to try to Mystic Shot my guy, or you're going to try to Quietus my guy, or something like that. Well, what if I just made it a fourth? Like, what if I just gave this Green Glade dual plus three, plus three? Uh, or sorry, plus two, plus two, it's a four, three? Can't do it. And like the God scenario where you get plus three, plus three, and now has four HP, so it's out of all of the get excited range, all the deal three damage range. Um, and you're super happy about that. Snow Dog's insane. If you ever get the scenario where you go turn one Omen Hawk, top deck a 3-4 Snow Dog, you're just beating your face for days. And then, of course, you have your Zed to apply a lot of pressure. And then you have a lot of spells to keep your stuff alive. Almost half your deck is spells. So the idea behind this deck and how you play it is you just kind of play out a bunch of cheap, really big units because you're going to buff them, ideally, with Omen Hawk, Dog, here. So that's why we play full play sets of these because you're trying to buff your big. And then you're going to use your spells to try and keep them alive. So one mana Elixir of Iron is good. Wudra Style is three mana um, to keep it alive. But it has, you know, it gives you the buff, which is really nice. Nopify is to stop really cheap stuff from going on. And then obviously Sky Splitter, because it's probably the most broken combat trick we've ever had in the Legend of Rune Fair history. Two denies to top your opponent from doing really big things, um, which I guess, um, especially right now in the early meta, with a lot of people trying to be greedy, they're going to try and cast some really big, easy spell on you so might as well just stop it they're going to try and vengeance something you might as well stop it um they're going to try and do something really big and funny and cheesy and the goal of the, the guide of this video is to give you the best decks and try and help you win because that's what i do and so unfortunately you're gonna have to stop them from trying to have fun and deny them and the last card is will of ionia you can play three will of ionia i think if you go down to zero ari you can play zero ari or you just play two shadow assassin you can even take out the bone club if you really want to i kind of like bone club Take out a Uju style. Um, those are the cards I would take out first and then play a third Will of Ionia. And again, this is to stop your opponent from having fun. Um, actually, this is to stop the really cringe opponents that are like, oh, I'm going to attack you and then I'm going to give my guy might. You're just like, yeah, I'm going to and I don't have to worry about it. So that's your answer to all the, the cringy, overwhelmed guys that are trying to go up with might. And then any like big shenanigan stuff that's Will of Ionia, that back to their hand. So we get to have, we get to not have, we get to make our opponent not have fun while also making them not have fun. Our units make them not have fun because they can't block them. Our spells make them not have fun because they can't do their big to me. So this deck's really cool. It's not really a new concept, but I'm extremely excited for it. Um, so next one is going to be Gwyn Mordekaiser. So Gwyn Mordekaiser is going to be kind of like old Red Gwyn, where you're playing the Hallowed Package. You're playing one of these little guys, um, the Explorer cards, because you want to be able to get rid of any type of landmark that your opponent's playing. If it's a Seraphine deck and they have Sunken Ship, you want to get rid of that. If it's you know, any other cheesy landmark right now in the early game meta, you want to get rid of that. Speaking of cheesy landmarks, you're playing Crimson Banquet Hall. Uh, this deck's pretty sick. Basically, you're playing Gwyn Hallowed stuff, and then you are going to win the mid game by just going Fallen Reckoner, you can't block. Revive my Fallen Reckoner, you can't block. Eternal Dancers, Revive my Fallen Reckoner, you can't block. Enraged Fire Spitter, Might. Win might um, any, you know, uh, hallowed unit plus might. Very good. We have a really nice control package with the addition of Death's Grasp. So you have Hate Spike to be able to deal with all the cheap units. You have Death's Grasp to be able to deal with all the mid range units. That was really, um, really, really solid. Amalgamation is really, really good into aggro. I called this is that this is going to be one of the best cards in the new set. You're going to a lot of cards and a lot of decks. And uh, so far, the couple of games that I got to play with it, and I really got to abuse. 
I mean, I got to play it. Um, I got to heal too. I got. To, I think it healed me um, six or eight HP total against this like Pantheon deck. Which, spoilers alert, you're going to see that video. Um, it healed me like six or eight HP, and I literally won the game at like nine HP. And that's just the HP off of the healing, not including it being a five power unit, being able to block and kill. Nice. And then a cool thing that this deck has is it plays Crimson Banquet Hall. You can actually go infinite and win the game on turn six. Uh, yeah, I don't know if the stack, if the stack, you could potentially go infinite and win the game on turn five, but I don't know if the Crimson Banquet Hall is stacked because these cards were released after I played and I never got two of them to play when I was playing the deck, but I know you can at least do it onto turn six. So you can play Crimson Banquet Hall, then you play Mordekaiser. And then, so your Mordekaiser is going to come in. It's going to be a five, six, five, six challenger, which is kind of whatever, but also with the addition of Shackled Ghast. So Shackled Ghast says... Last breath, um, the next time you revive an ally, create a copy of me in hand. Um, so fun fact, Crimson Banquet Hall, when you play your one drop and the Banquet Hall deals two to it, it counts as you killing it. So it counts as like you saying it. So that means that when you play, the, if you have a Mordekaiser in play, this is going to cause zero, the Shackled Ghast. So you're going to play Shackled Ghast. It's going to deal two damage to it, instantly die. But because you have a Mordekaiser in play, it's going to say, oh, you killed the ally, so I'm reviving it. And then because you revived it, the last breath is, this is going to go back a tier. So what you're going to do is you're going to play that card 15 times, going to level your Mordekaiser, or however many times to level your Mordekaiser. Then you're going to attack with the Mordekaiser, because leveled up Mordekaiser says, attack for the rest of the game whenever you slay a unit, drain one from the enemy nexus. So then you attack with Mordekaiser, and then you just sit there and you just chain Shackled Gas because you're slaying this ally. That's what it counts as. It counts as you slaying it. So you're just going to play this another 20 times, or play this however many HP they have left, and then you pretty sick. So uh, that's a nice little infinite you can add in here. On top of this is just a nice anti-aggro stall tool. I know that's something that a lot of the Gwyn decks and these type of big decks struggle with is the big um, aggro pressure. But Shackled Gas is just a nice way to do that because you play this, you play Amalgamation, so that's going to be really solid anti-aggro tools. Um, you could even add in another Deathless card if you want or give something Deathless, which is cool. Um, I don't mind the guy that like gives a card Deathless in your hand and then you can give Mordekaiser Deathless so you can really consistently go off on turn six. That's probably something I'm going to end up adding up and playing. But yeah, this, this deck is, is really sick. And then the last deck I'm going to talk about, which I think is actually the best deck in the game right now, is actually Elder Dragon. Um, I don't know if it's this exact deck. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that it is this exact deck that's the best deck in the game. But I just think Elder Dragon is broken. I think Elder Dragon Freljord Ramp is really good, and that could be one that a lot of people look into. Um, I haven't seen any other Elder Dragon deck really surprise me except for this one and that one. Um... But yeah, basically the idea is you play this as a really slow control deck, um, and this is why I think this version is really, really good, is you play it as a really slow control deck, so that's why we're in Targon, and we have things like Cosmic Youngling, Sunhawk, Lisa and Dolly, we have Morganas, we have Dark Bindings, we have Star Fallings, we have Star Shapings, we have Sunburst, we have Seismic Shards. We have like all these ways to kind of deal with our opponent's cards, or on turns 1 through 4, 1 through 5, and then starting turn 6 is when you're going to start playing a big dude. So what you do, the play pattern for this, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this to you and I'm expecting you guys to lose and then complain and then unsubscribe to me and then send me not nice words on my Twitch stream. I'm going to tell you guys how to play this deck. A, a quick little 60 second how to play it. Is you stall for turns one through five. And then starting turn six, if it is your turn, you are going to play a big unit. Probably, ideally, Cloud Drake. Ideally, you can get Cloud Drake and then give it Deathless. So that way you get the Cloud Drake minus uh, one cost to everything, and then it dies and then revives thanks to Deathless, and then it gets it again. It's pretty sick. Um, but you're only going to play big units on your turn or after your opponent has like attacked or you're not pressured. Do not go onto your opponent's attack turn and spend your entire mana to play a, a Gym Dragon. Uh, that is not good. Don't do that because you will die. So basically you're stalling for turns one through five. And then let's say turn six, it's your turn, or you, I say your turn in LOR, it just means you have the attack token. Okay, play your Cloud Dragon, pass. On your opponent's turn, all you're trying to do is not take damage. So on your opponent's turn, when they have the attack token, you're going to just 
keep up mana for your stuns. Um, I have Seismic Shard and Blue Sentinel in here. I'm thinking I can take out the Seismic Shards and put in like the stun 2 card. Or take out the Star Shaping and put in the stun 2 card, something like that. Um, just put in a stall basically, right? So when it's your opponent's attack turn, you stall. It goes back to your turn. Okay, play another unit. And then you're just going to slowly play this back and forth game of not dying. And then eventually you'll get to a spot to where your opponent can't do much. I think like you can probably put just like really good stall tools in here and anytime it's your turn you play stall tool when it's your opponent's turn you stop stalling you know or when it's your opponent's turn you stall them when it's your turn you put big unit in play and you basically do that back and forth until you will outride every single unit based deck in the game like this deck will literally never lose to a deck assuming you didn't draw horrendously um because all of your units will eventually grow to be like infinite infinite size and then you, at the very worst, you know, 30 turns from now, you have an Elder Dragon in play. Um, fun fact, this deck can actually level Elder Dragon instantly. If you play Alatus, and let's say you have like Alatus and like just one or two other dragons, and then you play Elder Dragon, um, often the combo is like Alatus, Gentle, or Alatus, Gem Dragon, and then an Elder Dragon in play. Uh, you're basically leveling your Elder Dragon in one turn. Um, I have a really cool YouTube video coming out on Elder Dragon tomorrow, so make sure you subscribe so you can see the video and gameplay on that. It's going to be really, really sick, and it is really, really enjoyable. Also, if you guys are watching this um, when it releases at 12 p.m. CST, I am, uh, which is um, like noon CST, 10 a.m., whenever the new patch ranked goes live, I will be over on Twitch.tv streaming my live ranked games, and I will be playing probably this deck and then probably this Mordekaiser deck. And I'm going to be trying to be the one of the first people to hit Masters with the new deck. So I'm going to play ranked, starting upon them. I did hit Masters last season. And I'm just going to race to Masters. I'm going to race against myself. I'm sure not a lot of people race to Masters. But I'm going to do it with playing new decks. I'm not going to play Jinx or this or anything like that, which you can do that. But as a content creator, I want to play a new deck. And I want to be able to show you guys that cool stuff. So go over to Twitch.tv after you're done watching this video or right now. And I'm going to be um, streaming live. So cool. That's going to be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. The deck codes to all of these will be down in the description below as links. So all of you mobile players, you can still click on the link in the deck code um, because I'm awesome like that. And yeah, if you guys want to see any deck for an expansion or for a video coming soon, let me know. Let me know what decks you guys are looking that you're excited for. Let me know if you guys want to see a video on something, a deck guide on something. But yeah, I'm back to LOR. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed my LOR content because it's back and it'll probably be around for a while. So ask me for this video. Thank you guys. I'll see you in the next one.